Biden raised $26 million in donations while mocking Donald Trump for not having money. Trump attended a funeral of a slain cop while all of this was happening. Then today, a new fundraiser for Donald Trump was announced and he raised $33 million and the event hasn't even happened yet. Speaker Mike Johnson is losing the U.S. border battle bill. So now he's thinking maybe it's time we should give more taxpayer money to the country of Ukraine. I can now see with my own eyes why Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene wants him out. Trump's lawyers officially call for the lawful removal of District Attorney Fonnie Willis, and Republicans now want the same harsh treatment Trump received applied to entertainer Jon Stewart. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Biden's cult-like focus on electric vehicles may have finally backfired while offering massive incentives to automakers did spike the popularity of EVs temporarily. It seems all the hype has died down. Not only has Ford had to cut workers due to slow EV sales, but Tesla had their first year over year sales decline. Since the beginning of the year, Tesla stock has dropped 30%, which just proves that the EV market is not as strong as Biden and others believe it is. In, other, in another huge loss for Joe Biden, federal court judge James Hendricks blocked him from requiring states to set climate targets for transportation. Biden initially tried to argue that his presidential authority to regulate the performance of the national highway system included environmental aspects. However, Judge Hendricks stated the infrastructure's effectiveness in facilitating travel, commerce, and national defense does not encompass environmental outputs of vehicles using the system. In simple terms, this is ju just another case of Joe Biden trying to overreach by misinterpreting the law. Now, despite the law, the low performance of EV sales, Federal Reserve Bank Chairman Jerome Powell has claimed the economy is strong in general. During a conference in California, Jerome Powell stated, growth is strong. As I mentioned, the economy is in a good place. There's no reason to think the economy is in a recession or is at the edge of one. Now, I'm not sure if Powell is hoping to sway the market as a strategy of his, but he has repeatedly admitted that inflation is still too high to cut rates. Now, in my opinion, this economy is really strange, and I would not call it a strong economy. However, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And since Joe Biden and Jerome Powell only focus on rich people, of course, they would publicize that this is a strong economy doing well for everyone. As House Speaker Mike Johnson's focus seems to shift from uh, the U.S. border to funding Ukraine, there seems to be doubt in the Republican Party that he will accomplish meaningful border policy implementation. With that being said, Mike Johnson just met with Texas Governor Greg Abbott. At Greg Abbott urged him to pass border security legislation that will help stop illegal crossings between ports of entry along the southern border. While Mike Johnson initially claimed meaningful border security must be passed before more Ukraine is considered, he seems to have lost hope that Biden or the Democrats want any kind of border security changes. Now, the whole reason people liked Speaker Mike Johnson was his resolve to get southern border security handled but nothing is happening. Democrats have zero desire to pass a border bill now that the government and the military are fully funded. I guess this is why Donald Trump wanted them to use leverage while they had it. Well, now it's gone and there is no money going to fix the Texas border crisis. 
Popular podcast host Joe Rogan has accused Israel of committing genocide in Gaza. While watching a clip allegedly showcasing Israel bombing Gaza, Rogan addressed the Israeli government by stating, you went through the Holocaust, now you're willing to do it? While I understand where Joe Rogan is coming from, Hamas is literally the definition of calling for the genocide of Israel. They want the Jewish people completely eradicated from the river to the sea. Now, what do you think? Is Israel doing the right thing or are they in fact overreaching? I personally believe that Israel has the right to defend herself, but I also think they should stop killing innocent people in Gaza. This remains a difficult and emotional war to cover. Former President Donald Trump has officially appealed the ruling which allowed District Attorney Fonnie Willis to remain on his case despite clear evidence suggesting a conflict of interest. The decision will be taken up by the Georgia Court of Appeals, which is Trump's last chance to get the case tossed out before going to trial. Donald Trump's appeal application read, while the, tri while the trial court factually found D.A. Willis out of court statements were improper and defendants proved an apparent conflict of interest, the trial court erred as a matter of law by not requiring dismissal and district, uh, Will district attorney Willis's disqualification. This legal error requires the court's immediate review. So basically saying, listen, the court admitted there was evidence the court found that there was conflict of interest and then the court kept her on the case. She needs to be removed. Now, Trump's lawyers wrote in their brief today, D.A. Willis and her entire office should have been disqualified from prosecuting this case and all charges should be dismissed. Dismissal is the truly appropriate remedy because the disqualification of D.A. Willis and her office cannot fully undo the damage caused to defendants and their due process rights. But her disqualification is the minimum that must be done to remove the stain of her legally improper and plainly unethical conduct from the remainder of this case. Now, Fonnie Willis's office will have 10 days to reply to this application by the Trump legal team but it's pretty clear that she needs to be removed as well as her entire team. But we'll see what the appeals court in Georgia ends up doing. If it's anything like what happened with the appeals court up in New York, they're going to side with Trump because they see that the evidence clearly points in his favor. In New York, there's a mounting pressure pushing for Attorney General Letitia James to take action against actor Jon Stewart, the well-known talk show host, for reportedly underestimating the value of his real estate in New York. This uproar comes right after Stewart faced criticism for his hypocrisy, especially after he viciously tried to take on Donald Trump. Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba, is leaning heavily on Letitia James to make a move against Jon Stewart. She's making a strong case for fairness, saying, this is a chance to prove that no one gets a free pass. Adding to the tension, Republican Congressman Mike Connells is openly saying he can't wait to see the NYPD knocking on Jon Stewart's door to bring him in and take over his real estate properties. Now, we, we, we all know that likely nothing is going to happen because Jon Stewart's name isn't Donald Trump which will only prove Donald Trump saying that he is being targeted and persecuted for this prosecution and that his case should absolutely be thrown out. But again, let me know in the comments, do you think anything is going to happen? Now get this, Jon Stewart was able to sell his property for over $17 million, yet he only paid tax on 800000 how is that fair? How is that not cheating the state of New York? But again, his name isn't Donald Trump, so my guess is they don't care. After Biden raised $26 million during his grassroots fundraiser filled with only rich people, 
Donald Trump is attempting to beat that record by holding his own. His upcoming fundraiser will be held next week in Palm Beach, Florida, and has already generated over $30 million in donations. The event will be hosted by hedge fund founder John Paulson, who stated the response to our fundraising effort is overwhelming, and we've raised over $33 million so far. So far. There is massive support amongst a broad spectrum of donors. The dinner is relatively small in nature and is already almost at its cap. Now, this is really interesting because a lot of the billionaires that were saying they wanted Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, they're now swinging back saying, we are all in on Donald Trump beating Joe Biden in uh, November. Now, it's very funny to me that Trump is starting to gain a massive amount of wealth just as the Biden campaign tried to label him as broke Don. Um, last I checked, Donald Trump is a billionaire and Biden is only a decamillionaire with most of that money coming from Hunter Biden's business dealings and a book deal where he literally used stolen top secret information in order to get an $8 million book deal. But again, millions compared to billions is nothing. According to Bloomberg, Donald Trump is now richer than George Soros, the guy funding most of the district attorneys that have these uh, stupid, soft on crime uh, policies. Now, remember how yesterday I told you President Donald Trump attended the funeral of the slain police officer that was killed by a repeat criminal because of Letitia James and her loose on crime policies. Well, New York Governor Kathy Hochul also tried to attend that same funeral and the police officer's family demanded she leave and never show her face in their presence again, that she was not welcome and that it was her loose treatment of criminals that their husband, father and brother was dead that day. They basically told her, get out and never come back. But we know that she will continue to be soft on crime until New York finally grows a spine and stands up to Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul and says, no, we want people that actually protect us and keep us safe. Now, this is my update for today. Before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by and supporting this channel. It really means a lot to me. Before you go, could you give this video a like because it tells YouTube to share it with other people. Also hit that subscribe button. I want you in my community and we're getting up there towards 1.6 million amazing truth seekers. Now, before you leave YouTube, check out this video or check out this video. Hey, thank you so much. And I will see you on the next video.